I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies and today I've got my gear head, gear head hat on because we've had the gear head shipment arrive. Now you're going to say what's gear head and we're going to go all throughout and we're going to show you the shipment. Now the first thing, I did a review on a gear head bow that a customer traded in and I shot amazing with it. Like this little short thing and I shot like lights out with it. So after doing that review, one of my friends on Facebook messaged me and said you need to try out the rest of the bows so i got in contact with skip the owner of the company at gearhead and said look i need some bows so i ordered a whole bunch of bows a whole bunch of bows we're going to go through them and then we talked about shipping them into australia so flying them into australia and that was going to be about i think about 400 dollars a bow couldn't get any cheaper flying them in and that made the bows unaffordable so Anyway, so I paid for the shipment, but I didn't know the ship bows weren't made. So that was a bit of a problem because it took um, the company so long to make the bows. They had some bows, but then not the whole lot. So I said, look, wait till the whole lot's together and then we'll ship it in. So there's a come in by boat and it, it basically, the boat went around the world three times before finding the, the, the port in Adelaide because that's how long it took. And then from the time it landed in the port in Adelaide to get it on a truck probably took about another three weeks. And I'm not exaggerating. It's literally been eight months. Um, so we go, I want to show you the shipment and show you what these bows look like and go through them. Now, this is a gearhead box. This is what it looks like. And you think that's awesome because it's got a gearhead logo on the side so you know what it is. Now, this is the end of the box. It's box four. What's inside box four? I've got no idea, it's like a lucky dip. And you think I'm joking. There's the other end. There's that end. No identification at all on the boxes of what these bows are. So you know what that means. I've got to open every single box to find out what's inside. Like, oh, you're killing me. Like, so when, like, when a shipment comes in from a company, they normally have the boxes all labelled on the end here, what it is. And I pack it away like that. And when I go and pull it out for a customer, I pull it out because it's all labelled here. Look, I... Speechless um, comes up straight away. Why a company doesn't write on what poundage bow it is and what type of bow? Because it means I don't know what this is. I don't know what colour it is, I don't know if it's left-handed, right-handed, what type of cam it is. Like, it made my life really hard. Um, let's go to another box. This is box nine. Again, no identification whatsoever what the bow is. Oh gee, like. Anyway, let's open the box. Now I'm going to say that packed really well inside. Now this is so they come with a they come with a catalogue, which is handy because you've already brought a gearhead bow. Um. I come with a cap and this is the bow. Now this is similar to the bow I did the review on. Now the limbs are kind of covered in a, I'm gonna say like a foam rubber. Kind of been interesting. It's a, this is a, like a cam, like an elite, like a binary cam system with a three track system. Big chunky draw stop. Look at this draw stop here. And it's got big rubber on the outside of it, just there. If I can zoom in, 
big rubber on the outside. Now with this bow, so the one I did the review on was a draw link specific bow. Bit of a pain. This is a rotating module. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, yeah, one of the things that's cool, so if you want to go from left-handed to right-handed, move the cable guard from there to there. That's really clever. Um, anyway, that's whichever one it is. How do I know what it is? It's a Pro 20 because it's got a tag on it. Thank you very much for that. It's adjustable from 25 to 28.5. It weighs four pounds, 315 feet, seven inch brace height, because it's all on a tag. Oh, you're gonna make my life really hard. Now I'm like, well, what poundage is this bow? Now the first thing you're gonna say is, Stephen, you're blind. So I'm like looking to see what poundage this bow is and there's a, like a little poundage thing down here and it says the draw weight is 55, maybe it's 55 to 65 pounds. Maybe that's the way they do it. So I think this is a 45 to 65. Anyway, we'll check the invoice. That's that bow. Yeah. I really wanna show you bow 16. You're going to say, what's bow 16? I have no idea, but bow 16 we're going to open up. Because bow 16 is huge. It's like a massive, massive box. Um, and it's heavy. Bow 16's big. And this is bow 16. I'm making this look really difficult because it is, it's very, very difficult. There you go. This is a gearhead crossbow. Have I ever stated the obvious before? This is the first time I've ever held a gearhead crossbow. Now I'm gonna, like, why do I like gearhead crossbows? And you don't know if I like gearhead crossbows. The thing I liked about gearhead crossbows, they come in 90 pound. 90 pound is archery legal so you can shoot in tournaments with it and i'm like how cool is that so it's a compound crossbow 90 pounds with this big draw length this is the stock here look this here somehow clips down the stock oh god how's this work So I reckon this moves down here. I don't know how that works. People be like, Steve, why don't you learn about the product before you do the video? It's because it's like an unboxing thing and I want it to be like how it is when you get the product and you're like, I don't know how this works. Anyway, the stock here looks pretty cool. Shoulder thing here. Now what's really interesting So they've got a checklist here. Main frame components check. Limb support blah blah blah. So they've got a whole bunch of thing. They've checked the FPS. So they've checked the feet per second, but they haven't actually ridden it anywhere. That's weird. 
Um, square head to rail, arrow rest height adjustment, safety tested. Um, they've got a custom thing to bow is sighted in at 10 yards. That's not ticked and that's not signed. Now this was this crossbow was built on the fifth month. The fifth month. So we're in there. We're in September. So it doesn't see it doesn't seem that bad when you say the fifth month. It's like four months to get here. But I paid for it a long time ago. Now it comes with one arrow. That's the arrow there. Now this almost looks like a full length arrow. It's pretty cool. Um, what's cool about this, it's got a whisker biscuit at the front, so it's more like a bow. And you can see the trigger mechanism is fully exposed. It kind of is pretty cool. So, once again, I'm doing this video straight off the cuff. There's no sight with it. So it's a Piccadilly rail, so you can shoot a scope or some sort of system on here. I'm not sure how that works. So we're going to have to do some research. Now, the other problem with this, which obviously I haven't thought about yet. Okay. So this one, it's got a little tag on it. So this is called a um, X16. This is 125 pounds. I'm looking for the, I've definitely ordered a 90 pound one. Definitely, because I know I ordered 90 because I want it for, I want it for target archery. Because I want to do, I want to do some reviews. It's got some limb saver things to absorb vibration. But to me, this is cool. Now with crossbows, I'm often scared when I'm drawing them back. Because it's like so much power, like 400 pounds or whatever poundage they are. They're like scary. This doesn't, like 90 pounds, 120 pounds, that's like, that seems pretty doable. The build quality looks good. Um, this doesn't seem that scary to me. Um, the weight doesn't seem too heavy. I'd be interested in things like whether you can get, I'd be interested in the accessories, like I'd be interested in a shoulder strap for it. And I'd be interested in what sort of sights they have, but we'll do that later. Let's just look for the other one. This is really interesting. So this is an X16 as well, but you can see it's different. It's got the wood grip. Now I know one was 90 I ordered and one was 125. And they both came 125. They both look so one's got a different trigger system system here than the other one. And something's different here at the back. So this versus this. That versus that at the back. But they're both the same crossbow. That's weird. Now, if you're my friend in America who loves Gearhead or England, lost where people are. Um, you're probably going to know more about this stuff than me and that's cool. But it's a bugger that one of them's not 90 because I definitely paid for a 90. Um, because 90 is what I wanted to see if it was suitable to shoot target archery with. But it's a very different feel. The grips, like the grips are hollow here. This is quite different. But we'll look in there and we're going to do reviews on all this. Right, now what you want to see, I don't know what you want to see, but let's go and grab a Target gearhead in these boxes that are all unmarked and have a look at it. Now, my friend who shoots one of these swears by it. And he was a big PSE shooter. He shot lots of bows and he said this is the best thing he's shot since sliced bread and he's not sponsored. So let's look at this. So it's the same cam system we had before. So it's a tri-track with a big draw stop at the back here. Draw length adjustable with rotating modules. Rubberized limbs. The limbs look pretty good. Thin frame here. It's bolted together. You can swap the cab guide from left to right. Roller cable slide. It looks like a PSE cable slide. The grip's kind of unique. It's like um, 
you know what the grip feels like? Did you have, if you've shot a Bowtech back in 2006 with that metal grip on it, which was called a, was it a shrewd grip? It had a special name. Can't remember. It feels like that grip. It's a custom grip that Bowtech had made for their bows. That's what this grip feels like. It's quite, be interested to shoot with it. Now what's interested here, what's interesting here is you can change the brace height by moving the grip forward or back. You can move the grip left to right to change the way the bow talks in your hand. So I assume that's like a tuning thing. So this grip position here can be moved in all different angles. Um, it comes set in the middle setting, but that's kind of a bit weird, cool, whatever. The front stabilizer hole, look at this. So you can change the stabilizer from left to right. That's pretty interesting. Do you know what would have been a good feature? Because this is kind of, it feels to me, this boat, like it's, it's bit, like it feels pretty cool, right? It feels like a bow that you can adjust anything you want in, if that makes sense. So you can kind of build it the way you want it. It would have been cool to have this have like different angles on it. That would have been cool. But you can't. But you can move it left to right, which is, I think that's cool. I don't know why you want it, but it's cool. You might want it because it changes the feel. The one lower one, same, same also left to right. That's cool. Um, so this is the Gearhead 36. Um, the B36 here. Now what was interesting on this bow, because I would have thought I ordered a 60 pound, but this is actually 55 pounds. So I don't know if Gearhead don't make, and I tried to find my original order for the Gearhead, and I couldn't find it before doing this video, because I did look through all my emails. Um, metal limb pockets, you can see how much, um, access you've got on the thread um i would have thought they'd make 60 pound bows and i thought i ordered some in colors but obviously not but i do have a lot of other bows here we're going to go through them we're going to do reviews on them um and i'm pretty excited because we had no new bows in lately although there is a new shipment of elite Whatever that new Elite bow is called. Um, it's called something like the something or other. I can't remember. It's some sort of targeting name. Um, so there's that coming in. We've got the PC Omen coming in. Um, starts with the V. The Elite bow with the V. That's coming. Left Elite factory yesterday. So they'll be here in a week. But we've got all these Gearhead bows. So my summary of Gearhead. Um, to skip. It'd be really, really helpful if you put what bow it is on each box. <laughs> that would make my life so much easier. Even if you do it with a texture, I don't care. Like just that should be on each box. Like I don't, like how do you even ship this stuff? Now, I'm going to say probably on the packing declaration, because each box is numbered. I'm going to say on the packing declaration, it's probably got box one is this bow. Because I'm only thinking about this while I do the video. So I'm going to get the packing declaration and I'm going to see if the box numbered represents the bow. Oh, string here, different settings. That was on the other one too. But we're going to go through this when we do the things. This is kind of old school here. Like, I really like that. Like this is the draw stop, it's got a big edge so it can't fall off the side that some bows do. Um, yeah, so that's the gear head. So some, the people who shoot these bows swear they buy them. So I'll be interested to see how well I shoot with them. We'll probably do just a basic review that I normally do with all the bows. And then we'll probably do one with a target sort of set up. That's a balance there of it. Very different looking bow. Very, very different. Anyway, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. That's the gearhead shipment. Um, 
bit disappointed that both the crossbows are 125 pound and not 90 pound. So we'll be I have to message skip on that because I definitely need 90. Um, and I'm pretty interested for target crossbow because it's got a longer bolt what the rules are, how it all sits, because if these bows can be shot in target crossbow, I'm really interested in seeing how they compete against the recurve crossbows. Um, that would be very interesting, because currently there's no compound crossbows that are 90 pounds, so if these were 90 and they could compete, that would be an interesting thing to see how they compare. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna have to look at the, I'm gonna have to look through the manuals um, about the crossbows because there's no cocking device on the bows. So some of them use stirrups. These crossbows clearly do not have that because they don't have the ability to, to do that. So that's a bit interesting also. So it's interesting they've both got different trigger mechanisms. Anyway, interesting. I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Splice. Thanks for watching.